Hi, welcome to part one of the module 10 videos for Statway. Now in module 10, we're going to shift our focus from categorical variables which use proportions to quantitative variables which use means. So a lot of the concepts that we learned about using categorical variables still apply. However, the formulas are going to be slightly different. Now, the main portion of module 10 is still going to be confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. Now, let mu, the Greek letter mu, is going to represent the mean of the entire population. The Greek letter sigma is going to represent the standard deviation of the entire, of the entire population. Now, if we were to look at the collection of sample means, then the mean of all the sample means, now the sample mean is represented by x bar. The mean of all the sample means is the mean of the population. And the standard deviation of all the sample means is the population standard deviation sigma over the square root of n, where n is the sample size. Now, of course, as you're going to see later, it's rare that we actually know the standard deviation of the population. Okay, so we're going to have to make a substitution uh, to accommodate that fact. Now, when we're dealing with categorical, when we're dealing with quantitative variables, the criteria for normality is that either the population from which we are sampling is normal or the sample size is greater than 30. So again, it has to be one or the other of those conditions. So either the population from which we're sampling is normal or the sample size is greater than 30. It, it's either or. It does not need to be both. Now, in most situations, we do not know the population standard deviation sigma. Another way of saying this is that the sigma is unknown. The only option available to us is to approximate sig sigma with the sample standard deviation s. So we're going to replace sigma with s. So since we normally don't know the population standard deviation sigma, we have to use the sample standard deviation s instead. Therefore, the standard error of the sampling distributions, that means the standard error for the x bars, is s over the square root of n. Now, the test statistic, which we used to call a z-score, well, it's not going to be a z-score anymore. We'll talk about that in a second. The test statistic for a sample mean is x bar, which is the sample mean, minus mu, which is the population mean, divided by s over the square root of n. Now, since the sample standard deviation varies from sample to sample, whereas the population standard deviation is one value, and it only approximates sigma, the population standard deviation, its use in the test statistic calculation introduces additional variability in the test statistic. So because of this added variability, the test statistic is not normal. The test statistic varies according to what we call the student's t-distribution. Now, instead of calling it a z-score, we call it a t-score, a t-value right here, x bar minus mu over s over the square root of n. Now, the t-score is the number of standard deviations away from the population mean. So it has the same functionality as a z-score. Now, one thing that was very, very interesting about the t-score is the origin of it. Now it turned out that in the late 1800s there was a, a statistician that worked for a brewery in London 
and as part of his job he needed to run statistics and he came up with a situation like this where the population standard deviation wasn't known so he developed this t distribution now he wa he wasn't allowed to for proprietary reasons publish his result under his own name so he published his results and he signed it student that's why it's called the student's t distribution okay so like the z score the t score is an estimate it estimates how many standard errors the sample mean is from the population mean okay now we have something called degrees of freedom. Now, degrees of freedom are when you compute a standard deviation. Okay, remember the sum of all the x minus x bars, all of those deviations add up to zero. So for example, if you had four data points, you would compute the first three deviations and the fourth one is predetermined because it has to add up to zero, all four of them. So we say the degrees of freedom is the number of data points n minus one. And the degrees of freedom are going to be very important with the t-distribution. Now, here are some interesting things about the t-distribution. It's bell-shaped and symmetric just like a normal curve with a mean of zero but the t distribution depends on the degrees of freedom we haven't had this in the past now t distributions have heavier tails and narrower peaks than the standard normal distribution the area under each t distribution curve is one just like it was under the normal curve as the degrees of freedom increase the tails are thinner in other words, closer to the x-axis. As the degrees of freedom increase, the t-distribution eventually approaches the look of a standard normal distribution. And when making inferences about population mean, the degrees of freedom are equal to the sample size minus 1. So if you look at this curve here, you could see that as the degrees of freedom get larger and larger, okay, like for t equals 5, uh, degrees of freedom 5 it's looking more like a normal curve and when the degrees of freedom like 1 it's small you could see here we have a very very wide tail okay now if we're interested in a confidence interval the margin of error is the t critical value which we'll talk about in a second times the standard error, s over the square root of n. And how do we get the confidence interval? x bar plus or minus the margin of error. Now, unlike the population proportions in the z distribution, to get a critical value, it's not just a set of three or four numbers. Here, you need a chart to get this. There is a way of using your TI to get it, but you can't do it, unfortunately, on the TI-83. So suppose, for example, we had four data points. Then the degrees of freedom would be three. So again, if the sample size was four, degrees of freedom would be three. And the T critical value for a 95% confidence interval would be 3.18. Now, let's look at an example. Logging companies harvest wood by cutting down trees and forests. Some people believe that logging affects the behavior of black bears. In particular, people believe that logging changes the size of the bear's home range. The home range is the area that the bears use on a daily basis. Researchers studied Canadian black bears that lived in a forest where there was active logging. The researchers put radio collars, tracking devices, on 12 female black bears. Then the researchers measured the spring and early summer home ranges in square kilometers of the female black bears. The sizes of the 12 home ranges are listed below. You should assume the home range of female black bears is normally distributed. So now, 
How would you get the X bar? Well, you would have to go back to your TI and you would hit the stats button and you can get this information from my module 2 video but you would go into stats you would edit so you would put all these numbers in a list like L1 for example then you would go back to stats you would hit one var stats I mean calc and then one var stats and then that gives you your X bar and your S. It also gives you the five number summary, but we have no use for that here. So putting these numbers in, all 12 of these numbers, gives us a sample mean of 26.28 and an S value of 11.47. Again, that is from your one var stats from your TI. How do we get the margin of error? Well, it is the T critical value. So if we're looking at a 95% confidence interval here, let's go back to this chart. Okay. We have a sample size of 12, so that means the degrees of freedom is 11. And if we have want a 95% confidence interval, the T critical value is 2.20. So now we take the T critical value times S, 11.47 over the square root of n, the square root of the sample size. The margin of error is 7.28. So now to construct a 95% um, confidence interval, x bar minus the margin of error, x bar plus the margin of error. And so we get an interval from 19 to 33.56. Okay, now the next thing that I wanted to talk about before we look at um, another example with paired differences is the higher the degrees of freedom, that means the larger your sample size. The larger your sample size, the less variability you have. The smaller the confidence interval, it's thinner. And look what happens. Okay. As, if you look for a given confidence interval like 90%, okay, as your degrees of freedom goes up, that means you have a larger sample size, your critical value is going down. So your margin of error is going down. Therefore, you get a thinner, narrower, more precise confidence interval.